Hi, Michael Hurwich here for CreativeCow.net. In this tutorial, we're going to look at embedding a speech transcript in a Flash video using Adobe Creative Suite 5. There's also a written description accompanying this tutorial and a sample project. There are basically five steps to embedding speech transcription in Flash video with Adobe Creative Suite 5. First of all, you create a script in Adobe Story. Then you import that script into On Location and embed the script in the video using On Location. Then in Premiere Pro, you perform the speech analysis. This is where the written text gets synchronized with the spoken words in the video. Then you use SoundBooth to get that information into an FLV file as cue points, and that's a three-step process. And then finally, you use Flash Professional to create an FLV player and ActionScript to access those cue points. So let's see how this is done, starting with creating the script in Adobe Story. So here's Adobe Story. I've just installed it. There's a sample project. I'm not going to do anything with that. Instead, I'll create a new project, and I'll call this Tim underscore Siglin. Since the video is of an interview with Tim Siglin at Streaming Media East. And it brings up a blank script. I'll just put in a title here, even though we're not actually going to use this. and go down to the next page. And I've actually got this script written out in a text file, so I'm going to be cutting and pasting a lot of this. The interviewer is Peter Servieri. I'm going to tag that as being a character element. And by the way, each one of these elements that I tag becomes metadata. So these tags go on to be embedded in the file, and you can tell what is a character, for example, and what is dialogue. And the editor is quite intelligent as far as guessing whether the next thing that you're going to be doing is a character or dialogue. So I'm marking this as a character as well. Just hit Enter, and it knows that the next thing is going to be dialogue. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in some text for the dialogue. Hit enter again and the tab key, and just by hitting the tab key, it knows that because I just had dialogue, the next thing I'm going to do will probably be a character, and I type P, and it thinks, well, this is probably Peter Servieri again, so I don't have to type that again. And then just paste in that dialogue, hit enter, tab in again, it's ready for a character, just type T, it guesses it's Tim, which is correct. So you can see how convenient the editing is here. We're actually not going to make use of these character names in this particular project, but they are stored as metadata, so you could make use of them. So I'll just speed ahead a little bit here and finish this up. And the last thing I need to do here in Adobe Story is to export this as an ASTX file. That's my whole goal here with Adobe Story, is to get the script as an ASTX file. That's what I'm going to need in the next step with On Location. And I'll name this Tim underscore Siglin, and save, and then we'll move on to On Location. I'll close the project. Here you can see the project in Adobe Story, and I'll close Adobe Story. Here we are in On Location. I'll just create a new project, and I'll save it in a new folder called OL for On Location. And I'll call it Tim underscore Siglin, and save that. So here's my On Location project. I'm going to go to the File menu and Import an Adobe Story Script. Here's that Tim Siglin folder. It says nothing matches my search. That's because Adobe Story did not name the file with the extension ASTX. It doesn't do that by default, apparently. You would think it would, but I'll just rename it with that ASTX extension. So when you save your file out of Adobe Story, be sure to give it that ASTX extension so that 
on location will find it. So now we go to File, Import, Adobe Story, get into that Tim Siglin folder, and there's our ASTX file. So it creates this placeholder, and now we're going to simply drag and drop the video file onto that placeholder. But before we do that, let's go look at the timestamp on this file. It's 814. So now let's go back to on location and just drag and drop that file onto the placeholder there. And then going back to the Windows Explorer, you see that timestamp is now 815 because on location actually embedded that script in the file and wrote out a new file. And that's all we need on location for. We're ready to go on to Premiere Pro where we'll use this embedded script. So here we are opening a new project in Premiere Pro. I'm just going to accept all the defaults here. I'm just leaving the project named Untitled. I'm not even going to actually save this project ultimately. What I really care about is the speech metadata which will be embedded in the AVI file itself. I'm not really going to use the Premiere Pro project beyond that. I'm not even going to save it as a matter of fact. So now I'm going to bring that AVI file into the Premiere Pro project. Just drag it right into the project window here and then drag it into the timeline. Then I'm going to click on the video to select it and in the speech analysis window just above here I'll click the analyze button and you notice it says use embedded Adobe Story script. That's a script that was created in Story and embedded in on location. So just click OK. It brings up the media encoder and you can follow the progress as the script is synchronized with the actual spoken words in the video. And I'll just speed this up a little bit. And now it's done. I'll minimize the media encoder and when I click on the file in Premiere Pro, Presto Magico, here is my script in the speech analysis window. And what you can't necessarily tell just by looking at this in Premiere Pro is that this has been embedded in the video file, synchronized with the actual spoken words in the file. One clue to this is if you look at the timestamp on the file itself. If you'll remember the last time we looked at that timestamp when it came out of on location, it was 8.15. And now it's 8.19 because Premiere Pro has actually written out a new file with that speech analysis embedded in it. So I'm going to exit Premiere Pro now and I'm not even going to save the project. The information I need is right in the AVI file. I'm just going to go into Sound Booth and drag that AVI file into Sound Booth. And you see as soon as I do that you see that speech analysis information on the left there in Sound Booth because it's right in that AVI file. And the first thing I need to do is to save that speech analysis information as an XML file. So I go to File, Export, Speech Analysis. And I'll just create a new folder for this called XML. And I'll call this Tim underscore Siglin underscore AVI underscore speech to remind myself that this is the speech analysis data. And now I'm going to bring that information back into Sound Booth but as cue points that I can use with my Flash project. So I go to File, Import, Markers. And Markers means cue points. And I'm just selecting the same file I just exported. And you can see all those little dotted lines that appear in the timeline there. Those are the markers, the cue points. And now the last thing that I need to do in Sound Booth is to save this as an FLV, and all those cue points will be there. And I'll choose FLV F4V, create a new folder, call it FLV, click Save. And in the export settings, 
You can make sure that it's an FLV, not an F4V. You've got a lot of options here. If it comes up with F4V by default, just change it to FLV and click OK. And now it's saving out the FLV file with the cue points, and I'll speed this up as well. So I've now achieved my goal with Sound Booth, which was the FLV file with embedded cue points. You can see that right here. Don't let the file name fool you. It's Tim Siglin AVI.FLV. It's not an AVI file, it's an FLV file. And I'm not even going to save the Sound Booth file. The FLV is all I really want. Here I am in Flash Professional. Go to File New. ActionScript 3.0 is what I want. Click OK. And the first thing I'm going to do is to open the library, just so that you can see that it's empty. And now I'll open the Components panel and drag an FLV playback component and a text area component onto the stage. And you can see that the library gets populated as I do that. Click on the stage to get rid of the Components panel. And now I'm going to go ahead and save this project, and I'll save it in the FLV directory. The same directory that I just saved the FLV in from SoundBooth. Since I'm going to be accessing that FLV from the Flash project, it'll be convenient to have the Flash project in the same directory. And I'm calling the project Tim underscore Siglin, so the file name will be Tim underscore Siglin dot FLA. So right now that folder contains just the Flash document, the FLA, and the FLV file. So now I'm going to hit Control Enter. And that runs the project in the authoring environment. And if we go look at that folder now, you can see that it's created a skin file. Skin under play seek mute. And that's why I hit Control Enter to create that skin file. And now I'll delete those components from the stage. I'll be creating the player and the text area using ActionScript in combination with the assets in the library. And now I'm bringing up a text file that contains the ActionScript code. I'm just going to be copying this into the Actions panel. First, I should bring up the Actions panel. Now I'll Control A to select all this text, Control C to copy it, go to the Actions panel, click, and Control V to bring that all into the Actions panel. So all that code is in there. And we're just about done now. The main thing I need to do is to edit line 54 to reflect the name of our FLV file, which is Tim underscore Siglin underscore AVI dot FLV. And with that, we should have a working application. So I'm just going to hit Control Enter. Now, the way that I'm creating this tutorial, you're not hearing the sound, but it is playing. But we're not seeing the transcript. If I enlarge this window a little bit, you'll see the transcript. There it is, appearing as they say the words. So let's get out of this and change the size of the Flash document to include that text area with the transcript in it. I'll make this 800 pixels wide and 600 pixels high. And Control Enter. And now that transcript appears within the Flash document. Now when you're actually deploying this, you'll want to go to File, Publish Settings, make sure that you've got the Flash and the HTML selected, and Publish. And now if I go to the folder with my Flash project in it, I see the HTML file, which it's calling a Firefox document since that's my browser. Click on that, and that actually runs the Swift movie, which in turn plays that FLV and displays the scrolling transcript. So congratulations on hanging in through this fairly long tutorial. I hope you found it helpful.